icebergs, the ocean's cathedrals. Each spring, these bits of glaciers make their way down the Labrador coast, melting and changing as they go. To tourists, they're a major attraction. To mariners, a major concern. Yeah, that one's a new one, the, the, one, the first one. But to the crew on board the Sea Alert, icebergs are a mystery, icy pinnacles of information. It's too big to tow, though. But so far, I don't see one that's small enough to tow. Well, uh, well, that one out, way out there is definitely small enough, but uh, I think if we get over and have a look at this, we might be surprised. We might be able to pick it up. I think this one's too big right here, for sure. There's no doubt about that. Denny Christian is with Memorial University, the, with yeah, C-Core, the Center yeah, for Cold sure Ocean Resources Engineering. Night, so we can get that on the GPS and... Yeah see how far it traveled. Did you see the one off, uh, off the Port Val? Yeah. Between the islands? Yeah. Do you think that's the big cathedral burg we saw? I, th I, I think it may be, and it's, it's uh, done a flip on us. Yeah. Denny and his team are trying to figure out exactly how much damage one of these could do, say, if it collided with an oil rig. Their plan seems simple enough lasso the berg of their choice, tow it into the side of a cliff, then measure the impact. Is southern Labrador a good site for this kind of work? Well, better be. That's why we came here. <laughs> yeah, I think it's an excellent site. We've done a lot of research, uh, and uh, we have to have two things. We have to have the deep water at the cliffs, and we found that here, and we have to have high potential for icebergs. And uh, this site, at the times we've been here, is excellent. This berg looks like it might do the trick. It's a fair size bigger than what they had in mind, but Denny figures a lot of it will melt away during the tow back to the cliff. Yeah, it looks good because it has uh, all this uh, undercut around it, so the rope should go under, hopefully, and, and uh, we'll be able to get a good uh, grip on it. Actually getting the tow rope around the big berg turns out to be a bit of a challenge. Circling the berg was easy enough. Picking up the end of the line is the hard part. We're like a dog chasing its tail for a while, chasing the boy around the bird. I'm trying to get up on the other side of the line this time. Yeah. See if we get the line from the horse. Without a speedboat, it's a bit of a challenge for skipper Scott Kane. But in the end, patience and skill win out. Icebergs obviously don't take to being manipulated, especially one this size. 
Still, the tow line seems secure enough now, and the sea alert is actually making some headway, albeit not much. Well, according to this, we're moving at 1.3 knots, but then the, the iceberg was drifting at uh, so uh, that's all right, just keep it going. We've got several miles to go to get it back, so we'll just cruise along here. We're making about a knot, so uh, there's no rush. You can't rush with something this size. We just take our time and get there. The sea alert's working on 630 horsepower. She's pushed and pulled a lot of things in her time, but icebergs are a first. The British-built tug is 35 years old. Her last job was with a salvage company in Cork, Ireland. That's where Scott Kane and his brother found her, retired and for sale. The Canes wanted this iceberg contract, and they needed a tugboat to get it. So they bought the old tug and steamed her all the way home. It was a long haul looking at it to come across. Was many ships crossed the Atlantic. Everybody else could do it. I suppose we could do it, too. So did you have any reservations, though, about making the trip? Oh, few. Uh, our biggest worry was we didn't know what the, what the engine was like, because uh, we'd never seen it. We opened up a... Uh, uh, we opened up a door on the engine, looked at her bearing and a piston, just one cylinder had the seven. And it looked good, and the, the crowd that we were buying off the boat, they, they certainly give the engine a good name. So we brought her out for a test run, and everything worked good, so we left and come across. <laughs> it took Scott and his crew 11 and a half days to cross the Atlantic. Aside from bad weather, they had no trouble. Scott now has complete faith in the old tug, even in the face of icebergs. Seems like she's doing the job, as we can see here. Uh, we can't expect much more out of her. Uh, she's been good to me so far, and that's what counts, I suppose. Uh, Great Blue Island, uh, Great Blue Island, Sea Alert. Uh, Great Blue Island here. Go ahead, Sea Alert. Uh, I was staying there this morning, over. Uh, things are going pretty good. We're making some progress. Uh, I was just calling in now to get something brought up by Ed if he's still in there. Yeah, I see. Yeah, okay, good enough, and Carol, uh, standing by. How are you guys doing with the exit there? Uh, Carol, we're making point eight of a knot, uh, and we're headed west, so we're coming in your direction, over. This is where we're headed, Grapeland Island. This is the cliff the iceberg will eventually be smashed against. It's no ordinary cliff. Sea Corps scientists have attached a six by six meter steel panel to its base, most of it's underwater. When the berg strikes the panel, it registers the impact and sends the information up the line. 0 0.5, 0 0.4, keep going. 0.1, there you go, stop. The scientists have their computers set up at the top of the cliff, computers and cameras to record the impact. 0 0.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.1. Good, stop there. Okay, 14, uh, 15, sorry. Uh, go back to 16 there for a second. Do you want to come up here about minus 0 0.1 there? 150 feet up the face of a cliff. No small thing, all this. Just ask the guy hanging off the boom, Sea Corps scientist Greg Crocker. Building the load panel was the first thing. They did that back in St. John's. But then there was the matter of getting it here, all 30 tons of it. It was shipped up here in a barge, and, and uh, probably the most difficult thing we had to do was figure out a way to get it from the barge onto the cliff. And uh, we designed this, uh, this jib boom here. Um, which turned out to work really well. It's more or less a straight lift off the barge and just lowered into place. Um, the conditions are a, lot, are a lot different than the lab. We don't get a, a second chance to do a lot of things. It, most of what, what we have here, if it doesn't work, we go home. Um, a lot of it you can't fix out here. 
there's still some last minute work to do on the panel, all of it underwater. You ready when you are, Tracy? That's right, you're right. Hey, David! Dean! Ready? For the past week, the divers had been hung up on rough seas. Some days, they couldn't land on the island at all, much less dive. And when they did dive, they couldn't always work. They were getting tossed around, they are getting beat around by the undertow, by the swell in the sea. So it's precarious at the best of times, you know. So you really can't imagine what it's like down there unless you're down there, I Unless guess. you're down there getting thrown around, yeah. You sort of have to hang on with one hand, try to keep yourself, and work with the other hand. So you're, you're somewhat limited in your ability. So. What's that, Trace? That's all I'm going to get in that one, don't huh? OK, uh, tighten her up, and we'll move to the next one, eh? Now, I never, ever knew you could talk to a fellow underwater before. Oh, yeah, well, that's common in commercial work, and you really need it to communicate with the surface for the, word, for the work to go smoothly, you know. Otherwise, if you're on scuba, you're bobbing to the surface all the time. It slows down your work, and you don't get, you know, as much time in the water as you need. I'm going to take one in the gym right now, but, uh, no, I do that. Roger, so you want the line lower down here? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Lower the line. By the time the sea alert is back with the iceberg, the underwater work should be about done. It'll be too late in the day to try an impact, so they'll leave the berg here at the island, and everyone will head back to home base, to Pax Harbor, the summer fishing place that seems to have found a future in icebergs. Harbor is about 10 miles from Greatland Island. It was always a summer place for fishing families back when cod and salmon were plentiful. It was fish that first attracted Ed Kane's family. They bought salmon out of Pax Harbor for years. <coughs> but now ice is what keeps them here. It was Ed who first sold Seacor on this place as the site for their work. Now it's his brother who skippers the tugboat, his lodge that puts up the scientists. A brand new lodge still getting the finishing touches. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, put some of these fish here up to the, uh, up to the dining hall to uh, get cooked for supper. And as you can see, there's iceberg ice uh, on the fish, and that's what we, we hold them in anyway. So that's, uh, that's what you call fresh salmon on, on iceberg ice. Ed is counting on icebergs and iceberg water, attracting more than just scientists. He thinks ice will put Pax Harbor and his lodge on the map in the world of adventure tourism. He sees his history and his future all in this pan. That's quite a jump, though, Ed, from salmon to icebergs. Well, it's... Uh... Well, it's all out there in the sea, I guess. It's not that big of a jump. Uh, it's all down here in Labrador, and, and we've been, at least I and my father and uh, all, my, all my family has been involved down here now since uh, for uh, probably the fourth or fifth generation. So we kind of like it, and, uh, and we're here to stay by the looks of things right now. This venture really is a family affair. 
Ed's brother-in-law has done most of the carpentry work on the lodge. And his fiance is running the kitchen, where there's a lot more on the go than just salmon. Lobster is a real treat in Labrador. The shellfish isn't native to this coast. Ed had to bring these in from the island. You can tell, though, Marina cracked a few in her day. Add a few steaks to the menu, and you've got a meal that would lure anyone to Pax Harbor, icebergs or no icebergs. After supper, talk soon turns back to icebergs and the chances of pulling off the first impact the next day. It's what this group's been working toward for more than two years now. And this evening, success feels very close. Everything's ready on the cliff. Ice is being towed in. Now it's simply a matter of smacking the berg up against the panel. Something we soon realize is not as simple as it sounds. I don't know how well those uh, anchors are going to fit down. We're going to find out right now. The guys decide to start small. They've chosen this baby berg, a piece that broke away from the berg we towed in yesterday. Greg Crocker's job is to install the ice anchor. The tug's tow rope will be attached to this. It's good, Greg. I need a rope now. Greg's wearing a dry suit underneath his overalls. A good thing, too. He could easily find himself in the water if the berg should happen to roll or if he simply falls off. So far, so good, though. Greg pretty much stays dry this time. Go ahead, Ed. This is a small bird, but we're going to try it because it's available. We have what we call our pendulum rope. We're going to hook that onto the ice, uh, onto the uh, iceberg, the ice anchor we just put in, and then we'll bring the big tug in and uh, put the tow rope on it. There's a certain amount of aim involved here. There's always the chance the iceberg will miss the panel altogether. But we don't get that far this time. Just as this starts to tow, the little bird breaks apart. Jim, Jim, Jim. And because it was such a small piece of ice, we split it in two, and it all fell apart, and our ice anchor came out. I think the piece of ice was just a little bit too small with that big tug, and it's the first time we tried that. So. So is it disappointing for you with being your first attempt? Oh, we're used to disappointments. It's all, uh, it's, uh, we got to get, uh, you know, the thing, uh, a few tries before we get it working right. It'll take a few more tries, too. Here's what happens with the next piece of ice. Oh. Losing the pulley is no small deal. It sets everything back another day or so. But eventually, the bugs do get ironed out. Secor's overhead camera tells the story. This is the first time scientists have ever pulled this off, anywhere. Other ice impact experiments have been done in laboratories around the world, but nobody has dared try the real thing until now.
Over the course of the summer, Sea Corps manages 28 successful impacts. The biggest berg was somewhere around 2,000 tons. You see the pole there, that's swivel again in the pole area. Eight months later, at the Sea Corps building in St. John's, scientists are still wading through data and still basking in their ultimate success. Oh, I, uh, uh, I'm more than pleased, and I'm sure the scientists are too, because we, we were quite confident that we could get uh, impacts, but uh, to get uh, so many and at such good speeds and such good hits is, uh, was really great.